and the immensity of this hike is starting to hit me. One thing hiking teaches you is patience. These mountains are worth like one mile is at least two and a half Cascade, Oregon miles. This is gonna be a challenging hike. You can't beat the mountains, but you can attempt to adapt to them and thrive in them. Guys, if you're confused with how to plan your JMT itinerary, this video is gonna help you. It's gonna show you my 14 day itinerary going northbound out of Cottonwood Pass and we'll provide you just an example itinerary. It's gonna be very helpful if you download the Gut Hook Guide application. This is where I'm gonna be basing my itinerary off of in the titles of the different campsites. Second thing, like I said, this is gonna be a 14 day itinerary. I did it in 14 days, so if you're looking for it, perfect. If you wanna follow it loosely, that's cool too. I created an itinerary knowing that plans can and do change, right? But I needed to create one to be a backstop so I was able to get back to work in time. You know, they give, they give you some vacation but they don't want you to take too long because then they'll just give your spot away, right? Now the tough part of planning an itinerary in the Sierra Nevada is that there is so many variables that can uh, impact that itinerary. Day one was Horseshoe Meadows or Cottonwood Pass to Crabtree Meadows. Now I came out hot on this first day. I don't know if I would really recommend that because once I got to Crabtree Meadows, I was pretty much on death's door given the pretty much the altitude sickness that I, that I started to experience. So that was kind of a long day. Day two, I went from Crabtree Meadows and, and I went up and I summited Mount Whitney and I came back and I camped at Crabtree Meadows. I mean, I got back to my tent at like five, 6 p.m. and I just laid there for the rest of the night because that was all I could do. Again, altitude sickness was hitting me. Day three, I went, I finally continued back on the JMT. So I went from Crabtree Meadows to a campsite before Forester Pass. This was kind of a Nero day for me because I wanted to give my body a chance to recover. If you're going during uh, the stormy season of the JMT, which seemed to be the summer, which was every day, I got, this was when I got a lot of that wind, a lot of that storm um, early in the afternoon that was probably the worst storm that I was in because I was so exposed. So that's one thing, thing to consider if you choose this campsite. So my fourth day I went from that campsite and I went to a campsite after Ray Lakes wanted to summit passes during the day and then try to get as close as you can to the summit of another one so you could do that early before thunderstorms rolled in. So what I did was I got up and over Forester Pass by 8 a.m. and then I was on to go do Glen Pass, but by that time thunderstorms were actually rolling in. So I actually kind of lucked out. It was kind of playing musical canyons everywhere. Uh, but so again, you're kind of playing, the, you're kind of rolling the dice there, but I got up and over two passes that day. The descent down from Glen Pass into Ray Lakes I thought was going to be super simple, but this was the first time that I actually was like, damn, okay, the Sierra Nevada is no joke because that descent took an extremely long time due to all the rocks. From Ray Lakes, I continued on to the Kings River. Pincho Pass was relatively pretty easy. Uh, you're going to be crossing a little sketchy ass suspension bridge, which was kind of fun, pretty wobbly. And then the campsite next to Kings River was cool, although it isn't really next to the river. However, if you need water, make sure you fill it up before you get to that campsite or the a tenth of a mile past the campsite because there is no water exactly where that campsite is. Day six, I went from Kings River to Grouse Meadows. This is one of my favorite campsites and I actually did see grouse at this campsite, which is pretty cool. Mather Pass was super easy. The ascent was super easy. But what was tough was the descent and it's actually called the golden staircase. So I, I felt extremely bad for the southbounders coming up the golden staircase because it took me a while to get down. Again, just a lot of rocks, very, very rough trail. Um, so just keep that in mind. Day seven, I went from Grouse Meadows to another tent site. And this was just after Evolution Valley. This day, you're gonna be tackling Muir Pass, which was my worst pass of the trip. It was very exposed. It seems like it seemed like I was climbing absolutely all day. Uh, I was also eating a ton of these protein builder bars, which I'll never have in my pack again because it absolutely killed my stomach. And but once I got to the top of there, it was awesome because you started getting into Evolution Valley, Evolution Lakes, and all that. It reminded me of pictures I've seen of Greece. I've never been there, but that's what it kind of reminded me of. So that was some good eye candy to come out to. And then that tent site was awesome because it was right next to a stream. And again, one of my, another favorite tent site, I was by myself 
fell asleep to the stream. I was absolutely exhausted, but it was definitely a good site to just kind of unravel from the day. So day eight, I went from that tent site to the Marie Lake outlet. This day was awesome. This includes the descent down into Evolution Valley, which was probably the most beautiful part of the JMT for me. There was deer everywhere. If you really want to see like these deer and the does and the, there's giant mule deer bucks, fawns and everything running around, I definitely recommend getting up early and going and seeing that. They were everywhere, it was so cool. And then later in the day, you go up and over Selden Pass, which is another fairly easy pass relative to the other ones. In my opinion, the most beautiful of the passes. After that, you're just gonna descend down into Marie Lake which again was super, super, super beautiful. Day nine, I went from the Marie Lake outlet to VVR, which is where I was gonna get my resupply. When I woke up at Marie Lake, it was pretty crazy because there was coyotes yipping. I actually thought there were like little kids running around and yelling. I didn't know why there would be coyotes at 10,000 feet, but there was. Uh, anyway, I went down to VVR. You have to catch a ferry to VVR. We got stormed on because it was in the afternoon and sometimes they'll delay that ferry, which they did for about an hour. And, uh, but anyway, we finally ended up getting into VVR, eating a bunch of food and it was great. Day 10, I was actually gonna plan on taking a zero again at VVR, but I actually started getting really anxious to get back on trail and I didn't wanna get too soft like in a kind of a civilized place. We actually took the afternoon ferry back across Lake Edison and then just kinda made our way up towards Silver Pass so we could go and do that in the morning. On day 11, we went from that tent site to a tent site near Crater Creek. This was a long day for me. It seemed like I'm not sure why. Um, I was hiking with a couple other people, which was fun, but it just seemed to drag, the whole day just seemed to drag on. There must've been a lot of vert with this, uh, but we've passed some trophy onions, which was great. Towards the latter part of this day, we actually started getting service. And so at that point I was finally getting texts coming in and all that. Now that I didn't get any asking if I was alive, which I was super surprised. I was like, I thought I would get like three or four and there was none. So, you know, be prepared for that. Day 12, I went from Crater Creek to Thousand Island Lake. We stopped in at Red's Meadow, which was fun. $18 burritos though, but at that point you're just like, I don't even care, I just want real foods. This day you're gonna pass Garnett Lake, which was amazing would be a definite camp spot, but I wanted to go a little further to Thousand Island, which was really cool as well. The thing with Thousand Island is make sure, there's a little side trail that kind of juts below like the regular trail, so make sure you take that, and that's where kind of all the tent spots are. Kind of, it almost looks nestled into like some cliffs and stuff. Day 13, I went from Thousand Island Lake to Tuolumne Meadow Campground. The thing with this, this this was the, this is your last significant pass. So you're doing Mather, which again was relatively easy. Then you have a long descent, and then you go through Lyle Canyon, which is very, very flat. And in my opinion, it was super boring. So be prepared for that. You're gonna cross your first road of the trip in like two weeks. And you're gonna, I tried, I wanted to get to Tuolumne Backpacker Campground, which was absolutely packed by the time I got there at the end of the day. And I think it was a weekday. No, it was, yeah, it was still a weekday. It was absolutely packed. So I luckily met a couple people and they let me stay in their camp. Um, if not, I probably would have just stealth camped somewhere to be honest with you. Last day I went from Tuolumne Meadows to the Yosemite Backpackers Campground. This would involve some climbing and then a long, long descent down into Yosemite Valley. Uh, the first part of this day, I actually took a wrong turn and I went and saw Soda Springs accidentally, but it was actually really sick. I think I actually, I think that was the PCT. So, but I recommend going to see Soda Springs. It was really cool and it wasn't that far off a trail. So you got a giant descent into Yosemite. This is when you're going to start seeing a lot of people coming through. This is also when you're going to start encountering a ton of people. Again, it could be kind of a, a culture shock for you. It was for me after a couple weeks of not seeing literally anybody. So um, take your pictures next to the sign, I guess, if you want to, like I did. And this was during COVID, so there was no buses running or anything like that. I f walked past the backpackers campground that was on the right side. Somehow I didn't see the sign. So I had to walk another mile back to find it. I ended up camping in someone else's spot because it was at night. I was so tired and I couldn't, couldn't tell where I was, was super hungry, just set up my tent. I really didn't care, they didn't mind either in the morning. If you also want a, an example template of how I plan this on my 
on a Google spreadsheet, let me know, give me a DM, give me a comment, and I will kick you an email with that template. I just put like altitude, elevation, what my vert was gonna be that day, how many miles, blah, 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 blah. It was helpful for me, I carried it along my trip. Um, so always an option for you if you want, just let me know. Otherwise, again, kick ass on the JMT. We'll see you guys here for next video.